tweet at Drive Time RTE. You're all very, very welcome back. Well, today calls for an extended bank levy continued. Oireachtas Finance Committee Chairman John McGuinness called for an increase in the bank levy as a threat to the banks for not passing on interest rate increases to savers quickly enough. At the weekend, Further Education Minister Simon Harris criticised banks as being utter laggards when it came to giving higher interest rates to people's savings deposits compared to other countries. Well, for more of this, I'm joined by John O'Connell, uh, General Secretary of the Financial Services Union, who is also a member of the Irish Banking Culture Board, which recently called for an increase uh, to that levy. John, uh, bank levy, uh, newer, I don't know if that's what we would call it. Um, as the main uh, rep- uh, union representing banking staff, what's your what, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, good evening, Dervin. Well, we made a submission to uh, the Department of Finance when they did their public consultation a few months back on the banking levy, and we essentially said three things. One, that the levy should continue. Most European countries have a banking levy. Most of them are grounded in what happened to the banking systems in uh, 2008 to 2010, and uh, I think and we think it's very appropriate that that would continue. The second thing we uh, I suppose argued for is an expansion of the levy and you know there's a lot of players in the financial markets that aren't necessarily banks uh, and we feel and some of those don't have any presence in Ireland uh, imply very very little uh, people in Ireland and therefore we feel they should contribute as as well and the third thing uh, and that we think is the most important thing is the ring fencing of the funds we know that we have a financial literacy issue in Ireland uh, and you know, it's playing out at the moment in the debate that people are having around deposit interests and so mm-hmm. forth. Uh, so we know that that's a challenge for us as a society. And these funds should be ring fenced to support educating our population in terms of financial literacy, but also to protect things like the branch network and that where people access this advice and get their their banking services. Well, let's parse that a little bit, because essentially what uh, J- uh, John McGuinness, who's the chairman of the Arctic Finance Committee, he was essentially suggesting the weaponising of the levy uh, to to get the banks to increase deposit um, rates, so kind of you know uh, more stick than than carrot. Is, 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 do you agree that that would would have that effect to to essentially I, to I, weaponize I, it as a way of helping uh, mortgage holders and deposit uh, people with deposits? I, I agree with Deputy McGuinness when he talks about that banks have a societal role and they need to stand up and serve the communities that uh, they get their their. Um, income from. So I, I agree with him on that. I think I would be a little bit concerned. We've seen a volatility in the US uh, banking market. We've seen Credit Suisse in, in, in terms of so, and we've seen what happened in the Italian market in the last few weeks uh, when they put a windfall tax in. So I'd be... They, I'd they, be lost, they to lost go 10 down billion. The <laughs> they lost 10 billion. Yeah, I, I, no, it, it recovered and, and obviously uh, Ms Maloney, uh, the Italian Prime Minister, is standing over it. But before we get to the whole concept of a windfall tax, the Extension of the bank levy um, in principle sounds good, but who would you extend it to in circumstances when we've seen a flight of banks uh, from the Irish market and actually, um, you know, so it's a smaller pool that you would be um, expecting to to hold or to, to take on the, the impact of the levy. So who would you extend it to now that Ulster Bank and KBC and others have left the Irish market? Well, we've seen some uh, neobanks claim that they have two million customers in Ireland. And I think it would be totally appropriate that institutions or organisations like that would contribute uh, to a levy that's for the overall good of maintaining a, a, a stable banking s- uh, system, but also in terms of, as I said, contributing to societal good in terms of financial literacy and also mm. the protection of those institutions that do have bricks and mortar, that do have branch networks, uh, that communities value and want retained. And this is a very, very uh, good vehicle to, to achieve those ends. And by increasing our financial literacy as a society it Mm. it increases our chance to challenge in terms of things like deposit interest rates and that uh, because we're confident in our information and uh, knowledge. It could be your main banks on the one hand, you would extend it possibly to the likes of Revolut or other banks. What about the non-banking sector to which very many people saw their their mortgages assigned to the non-bank lenders? Should they also be in the mix or would that be another uh, scenario of potentially scaring off the investors from the Irish market? 
No, I, I think there's, again, there's players in that market, in the market that you're talking about, who are, you know, benefiting from the higher interest rates and, and so forth. So they should uh, equally uh, contribute to something that is in everybody's overall interest. So I don't think it should be more about inclusiveness than, than ruling any sector or subsector in the finance sector out. I think it should be about an inclusiveness. So obviously the bank levy was due to come to an end at the end of this year, December 23. I think there is a commitment to extend it into 2024. But in terms of, um, you know, is it a question of degree as much as kind? How, how severe should the bank levy uh, be be weaponized uh, to, to make it effective? Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's about... Um, a degree of fairness, and it's about looking at the at the levy as a force for good rather than, as you say, weaponizing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we we think that it has real potential. The minister has gone two of the steps. He's indicated over the weekend that the levy is going to mm-hmm. continue, and he's indicated that it's going to be expanded. And we welcome both of those. But he he should go the final step, which is ring fencing those funds. It'll mean nothing to. Uh, Irish society if uh, as has happened all along with the bank levy that it just washes into the general exchequer mm-hmm. funds. It needs to be ring fenced and used for a good purpose. Um, if it's too populist, if it's too aggressive as we saw in Italy um, where it was uh, quickly addressed uh, and limited, um, is there a risk of having too much of an aggressive approach here in Ireland? I, I'm not sure it's for the minister to, to have an aggressive approach around the levy. I'm looking at the regulator and I'm looking at the regulator in the UK who has acted and moved in terms of the banks and in terms of fair value for customers and, and so forth. And I'm looking here and I'm seeing the consumer code in the central bank, 12 years old, still won't be replaced until the end of the year. And that those are the vehicles that we should be looking to, uh, the regulator to say, regulate the market, make it fair, make it that if, you know, if, Banks are, are getting a return in, in terms of deposits and so forth. Well, well, uh, re- return systems. or huge profits, there, there's quite the difference. But uh, for now, uh, John O'Connell, General Secretary of Financial Services Union, thank you uh, for joining us. We'll take a quick break.